middle of Sumatra, there is a massive lake called Toba. It's on a supervolcano which erupted 70,000 years ago and nearly destroyed the entire human race, reducing it to just 3,000 to 10,000 people. There is an island in the lake called Samosir, inhabited by Batak people. Marco Polo observed that they were cannibals when he encountered them in the Middle Ages. The native religion of the Batak people was revived in a nationalistic form as part of the 20th century Indonesian independence movement, which was led by Muslims and communists. The modern form derived from this revival is called Malin. Unfortunately, it is heavily influenced by Islam and Christianity, forbidding the consumption of pork and worshipping what they call one and only Almighty God. This was part of an effort to conform to Pancasila, the Indonesian state-enforced monotheism. However, it failed because the government only recognizes Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Confucianism and Hinduism, the latter of which has had to adapt. I will explain this in my next video. Even the traditional Batak religion, widely practiced in the 19th century, was probably influenced by Hinduism, which first arrived here at least 1500 years ago. They believe in three worlds, the middle earth of men, the underworld of ghosts and demons, and the heavens ruled by the creator god, Mulajadi Nabalon. His first creation was Manuk Manuk Hulambujati, a magical chicken with an iron beak who laid three eggs from which the other gods hatched. Even worship of Mulajadi Nabalon was not as important in day-to-day -day rituals as the Tondi. Tondi, or Tendi, is one of three kinds of soul. It is an accompanying soul, just like the Norse Fulkia. It attaches to a person prior to birth and then determines the fate of that person in life. Men receive their tondi from Mulajadi Nabalon. They believe an individual has seven tondi, the second of which, named Saudara, brother, comes with the placenta, just like a fulke, which is then buried under the house. Special powerful people also have a second kind of soul called Sahala, which is associated with the luck and magic of the king, or the Hula Hula. The third kind, Begu, is the tondi of people who have died. These spirits of the dead appear at night. Great harm can be done to a person if they are separated from their tondi, and this can be done by a malicious Datu, a priest. The wooden statues in this photo from the Batak Museum in Samosir are related to cultic activities of Datu. These may be the entities which a Datu must employ to work his magic, or perhaps they represent accomplished Datu of days gone by and are now used for ancestor worship. They hold votive offering bowls on their heads and hands. The Tondi connect an individual with the Batak people living and dead. The dead are so important in a religion based heavily on ancestor worship. This mounted figure is a Hoda Hoda Bakawan, representing a deceased clan chief. And this enormous idol depicts a clan chief with two tigers. During funerals, Batak chieftains used human sized puppets like this, which were dressed like the dead and manipulated by the Datu to make them dance, weep, gnash their teeth, and speak in the voice of the deceased. The puppets were used to revive Begu souls and communicate with them. Christian and Muslim leaders have tried to wipe out such activities. The traditional Toba house is called a Jabu. The large roof area was used to store rice and also had a platform for unmarried male guests to sleep in. Ornamental carvings were traditionally made to protect the residents from evil spirits and black magic, but now they are merely decorative and a reminder of the past. This mask on the front is called a Jaga Dopak Protector. The ends of the main floor joists are carved at the front of the house, and these iconic figures called Singa Singa may originally have represented lions, but they often look more like people. The inherited souls, ancestor worship, dressing wooden figures as spirits of the dead, and ornamenting houses with religious carvings are the Batak religion, 
but all aspects of Germanic paganism too. This shows the perennial truths inherent to pagan religions. In my next video, I will look at Hinduism in Bali. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and become a patron or donor if you like my videos.